Ginger is probably the best party producers in Melbourne back in the day because they, they went that extra yard to, um, to just decor the whole place out and make it different every time. Crazy things like a Volkswagen Beetle covered in like glass and stuff and, and like a, a round ping pong table, you know, things like that. It's, it's added extra. I mean, like you don't expect that stuff, but when you see it and, you, and you're on drugs and it's, yeah. Really raw fuel came from uh, that warehouse raid for the UK was kind of all about, came from the docklands and I guess when that kind of went away, um, you know, at the end of 2000 that kind of, that really was a big turning point and a big changing point for the scene. And that venue itself, I guess in that time really is what put Melbourne on the map, like internationally, because like there was DJs all of a sudden, big DJs like Carl Cox and Sven Vath and Mike Garnier and Richie Horton and all those types of people coming to Australia and playing at this crazy location like on the water, views of the city, there was no development down there kind of at all at that stage and it was just, there was just some magical events going on, they were just amazing and that, I think it, you know, talk to a lot of Raiders now about what the scene was to them and a lot of them will say it was like that Shed 14 kind of era, um, nothing has come close to that. It was just different back in the day because of the fact that, you know, nothing else was like that in Melbourne and so people just wanted to go and do something different. And then I went downstairs because I heard the techno music going, oh yeah, and all these people were going off and I was like, couldn't figure it out, but it was definitely different. And I was like, okay, and I just accepted it for that. And then it was only when I went to Excessive that I re realised these guys are doing something different and I went, hey, I want, I'd like to do that. I first saw the shuffle in about 96, 97 when I was hitting a lot of clubs and a lot of guys did it and it was a really interesting dance, but I wasn't into it. I was more an R&B boy and that's where the girls were at. And so that's where I was at, I was a young fella. And then as I got more into my dancing and not going out to score or get pissed and throw up, actually go out and have a good time and socialise, I started to get into the dancing. And in about 2001, it went from being a real simple two-step to lots of guys throwing in lots of things, lots of innovations, skateboarders using the hat in a weird way, snowboarders learning how to spin on an axis, just all these different guys from all these different extreme sports came in and just started throwing up crap. And so all of a sudden, I got interested in it. When I first started, it was on. Oh no, it was difficult to dance in front of heaps of people. I thought they were all looking and like bagging me and stuff. But now you just don't care. You dance in front of anyone and you just do whatever you want. I started dancing back uh, when I was about 17, getting into the shuffle because I saw some guy do it for the first time in a club and it just looked really cool and I'm like look one day I want to do that so I started going home and um, put on a bit of beach ball people get ready get ready to flow and I started you know busting my moves and shit and um, yeah you know three years later rocking it still 10 years ago 15 years ago when I first started working in nightclubs as, as a bouncer You'd mainly just see girls on the dance floor, not many guys. That's turned around now. You can't keep the guys off. Shuffling is definitely a majority of men, but I say to the women now, get out there and uh, give it to them because, you know, we're just as good as what they are. You know, everybody's equal in the rave scene. First time you'd ever catch me on a dance floor, like, it was just the ultimate feeling because you'd never you'd like I'd never go near a dance floor again on and suddenly this fucking Russian feeling you're just rocking it up you're like alright don't care what everyone's looking at you you're just like yeah fucking let's rock the concept of um, the shuffle or the ability to do the, the double timing or the, to hit the beat on on the hat as well as the bass drum um, and to use your body weight shifting forward or backwards or left and right to guide where your feet are going to go and when you see such getting black level then to, you know, you're free. It's a bit like a DJ finally getting able to get his records in. He can then start trying to use his mixer properly, you know, to, to its fullest effect. And it's like that with, um, with um, the shuffle dance. Um, it, it frees you right up. And uh, the more you learn about your body um, during the dance and the way you move and how it affects your dancing, the better you get.
I first saw the shuffle at the God Easter party and I didn't really know what was going on. I just saw this great style of dance and I'm like, wow, what's that? And I just wanted to get try it, try it. So I started off not very good, just I don't know what I was doing. And then over time, went to other parties, got better. And more. I do more of like the running man kind of style. I saw the Melbourne Shuffle for the first time at the Greenwood Hotel in North Sydney. And I remember thinking at the time, what is this? What are these people doing? It looked really interesting though, and, it, and I thought to myself, it must be a private dance company or something, because there were about four or five people just on the dance floor, and people were just in a big circle watching them. I thought, oh, you know, they must be um, professionals. But then I started to see it more and more. And I asked somebody about it and they said, that's the Melbourne Shuffle. And I said, well, what is it doing in Sydney? And they told me that it's actually known around the world. same reason fucking everyone's out here in the middle of the bush this morning fucking have a look at them it's like it's just a, it's got their own thing happening and there's just all they're trying to do is just get away from all the fuckheads in the world and come and enjoy themselves and uh, and that's produced uh, something original which uh, has come through Australia in the sense that everyone knows fucking Melbourne rocks the show and when you look at it from an international point of view, it's simple in the sense that Australia's now to the stage where fucking we should be taking a bit of pride in it. It's as simple as that. People have just got to accept that there is a dance community and then there is a drug community and